So now inside of that space, if you can be comfortable with this amount of risk, then maybe we can also say, hey, once my child turns 14, we already have a list of scholarships that we're going to start writing essays for and applying for because we need we know we need to solve the problem for ten thousand dollars right right or but you know what you're working with you know and what you you've can got but it's do. again we've 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 got the plan we've developed the goals now we were assessing how we're back baby <laughs> Welcome to Money Therapy. My name is Brandon Chasteen, and I'll be one of your conversation facilitators tonight. And wow. this is Bill McGill. And uh, we're here to bring you a little bit more insight about your the emotions of financial. So money therapy. Uh, you know, the thought that I always have when I'm talking to clients is you know one of the challenge one of my challenge for their responses is money makes me feel and i draw a blank line because we all know our finances our financial situation money in and of itself has a lot of emotional control that's called being a human being and you can't beat it you just got to learn to be your best inside of it and reduce the reduce money mistakes as much as possible and the way that we limit the mistakes along our financial journey is to be aware of these emotions that can creep in, that can cause us to um, kind of derail our financial future. Um, when we have the awareness, we, we've spoke before, but then we have like, it's not enough just to be aware, but when we're aware that we're feeling afraid, um, we're being greedy, we're being envious, um, we're, we're, you know, maybe being too optimistic um, when we're anchoring, when we're, um, you know, taking advice from people that we should or shouldn't because we compare ourselves to them and we look up to them and we want to be like them. They're, what's right for them may not be right for us, right? So when we're more aware of how emotions affect our ability to make decisions when it comes to finances then we can like pull out our trusty little checklist of things, actions that we can take to mitigate the poor or negative consequences that can come about from those emotions, right? So we've talked a little bit about like fighter pilots having that OODA loop and it is just a muscle memory thing that takes over their body in a dog fight and they just repeat it over and over and over again until they improve their situation and they're in a position to win the dogfight, right? Um, so we'll give advice, we'll give tips, and some of these tips aren't going to fit your lifestyle, right? I, I enjoy journaling. Yeah. I enjoy my prayer time, my reflection time. I enjoy these moments of my day. Um, maybe a journal isn't right for you. So... It, think of other ways that you could sit with your thoughts and, and document them and monitor your growth and progress. And, or, you know, maybe, um, we say, Hey, sit down with somebody you care about and ask them these questions. Yeah. Maybe that's uncomfortable to you. So you can always figure out how to make these tips and tricks yours. But at the end of the day, when, when an emotion creeps in, we want to have a place that we can go to run down a process to help us not necessarily never deal, like we're going to interact with this, this emotion. It's hopefully this process puts me in a position to win, win that engagement, right? Uh, so if fear comes in, I have a checklist, I go down my checklist. Some of that might be reading my wind journal. Um, some of that might be, you know, giving space and creating space to allow fear to like, like, allow me to acknowledge it and then realize where it's coming from. Um, and then I'll repeat that process over and over until the fear is less and my rational human being side of me can say, hey, these are my goals. Um, the process is everything. So with that, I mean, that's kind of what we're talking about today, right? So one yeah. thing that I've noticed a lot is um, people coming to me 
say, actually, um, I just got an email right before the show and somebody emailed me saying, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this action. What is your recommendation? And the reality is, is they're kind of putting the cart before the horse. They're out of order in things. Right. Because my first response, I haven't responded yet, but my first response is going to be, you know, where does this fit inside your financial plan? Is this helping us achieve anything? And if that's the case, if it can fit in your plan, if it does help you achieve your goals, your, if it aligns with your values, your beliefs, your attitudes, uh, what's most important to you, then I'm going to invent a process right, to get you from where you are to where you want to be. And then inside of that process, what does the process tell us we need to do? So it's never, I heard of an idea, I'm going to try to make it work. It's my plan dictates this process and this process suggests I need to take this action. Yeah. At the end of the day, a lot of times people come to me and they're like, hey, I'm, my neighbor said do this with my money. Yeah. Should I do it with your money? Now, the real, the, real, the real truth here is this, this, this could be a brilliant idea. It could also be a brilliant idea for your neighbor. Right. And those two things are not the same as it being a brilliant idea for you yeah. or for you right now. Right. So um, I think one of the overarching things that I'm thinking about while, while you're you know, telling all these stories for sure is what we're trying to do with this podcast is just simply acknowledge that we all go through a lot of the same emotions and feelings when it comes to money, regardless of where you're at, regardless of where you're at. And it could, you could be putting the cart before the horse. It could be an amazing idea. It could be all these things, but having a professional in your corner that you can email like that and have Brandon say, you know, it, does this fit into our priorities? You know, mm -hmm. last week we talked about goals and how, or maybe a couple of weeks ago, we talked about how, how goals are just guesses and how important it is to start out with what do you actually want? What are your priorities? What, in a way that we tried to help you all with that is to, you know, write down what's important to you, um, write down what you believe in. Yeah. Um, and, and from there, you can start to populate a strategy, populate a plan, populate a goal and, and you know, try and get there. And so when you have those moments of, hey, I heard this was a good idea, or I'd like to do this, you can c call, email, text your financial professional and have that conversation of, am I putting the cart before the horse? And you're going to get that outsider's unemotional, um, you know, uh, third party reaction to, to be able to check your emotions and see if it's a good idea or not. Um, and that's the important thing that's, we're going to talk about the website today. We're going to talk about the email uh, list, the Sunday series that we like to send out that basically sets up this podcast and the thoughts that we have. And that's all in the effort to create this community that allows the space for y'all to reach out to us if you need to reach out to your financial professional who you trust and, and who you look to in those situations. Um, and just realize that you don't have to be lost in your own head and your own thoughts. You, you need to have that community of people that you can reach out to and, and get those good ideas from and, and be able to check yourself and, and make sure that your decisions are going to better you and your family and get you yeah. towards your goals. Yeah. So with that, the, the title of, of this show is Product Process Plan. Yeah. And then we're doing a little like arrow that says plan, process, product. And at the end of the day, we just want to make sure that the solution can't come before we understand what we're trying to solve. Right. Right. Um, I, I, I typed up this like analogy. I'm just not going to read it all, but the idea is imagine going to the doctor Yeah. and you go into the doctor and you're like, doc, I got a headache. And he just immediately turns around, like hands you a Motrin, take this extra drink Motrin, and he sends you on your way. Yeah. That might solve like 95% of the problems out there, maybe yeah. even 99% of the problems. But there is that one chance that I actually have like a brain tumor. Yeah. 
and he gave me the prescription before we found the diagnosis. We don't know what's causing the headache right now. Right. So if we if we did it in the wrong order, 99% of the time, he looks like a rock star. Headache's gone. But that 1% of the time, it's malpractice, and he loses his career, and somebody's dead. Yeah. Right? So it's it's so important to do things in the right order. Sure. Um, one of our webinars, we, we talked about the path. Um, the path is, is we, we talk about the path, we talk about the journey, two different webinars, um, and it's just the order of operations when it comes to building financial success matters, and it, 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 it matters a lot. Sure. And so understanding that if you're, if you're out there and you're kind of reeling and you can't, your feet aren't on the ground, you're ready to take action, and that is a dangerous place to be. Because if you're if you're reeling, and then all of a sudden you're also scrolling, and then some talking head that needs the click says, "Put your money here, do this, 10x millionaire tomorrow," right? Right? No risk. That doesn't exist, <laughs> right? And you're about to probably get taken advantage of, or just make a very very risky investment that you don't understand. Right. Why would you find yourself in a position ready to do that? Because none of the process has been done. None of the planning has been done. Yeah. And you just feel behind. Yeah. And, and part of the planning and part of building of the process really is it solves the problem because it lets you know where you, where you are. Where am I right now? Yeah. Ultimately, where would I like to be? from my, my vantage point today. Yeah. And here's the steps. And guys, I've, I've got to work with people that were like late into their fifties, into their sixties. I have a client right now that's in his sixties and he's about to launch a business. Yeah. You're not behind. Never you're right late. where you need to be, but the, we feel like we are. Yeah. So we want to jump ahead. And we want to insert the product. We want to insert the investment. And we don't want to do the work beforehand. Well, and that's where, like, Get Rich Quick comes into play. You know, that, while you're talking, I'm thinking that's exactly why Get mm -hmm. Rich Quick anything works. Because it preys on people's emotions. It yeah. doesn't... It, they never start out with all the hard work you have to do. Yeah. They always start out with how much money you can make, yeah. right? Because that tells you, oh, security, or I can get rich, whatever that means to you. Um and a lot of times in our profession, I kind of I tend to joke with clients like a lot of the times the actual strategy or plan that I'm going to give you is going to be really boring. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm not starting a multi level marketing campaign here. Like we're going to invest in mutual funds, right? And let me tell you what mutual funds are, and then everybody goes to sleep, right? <laughs> but it's not that doesn't necessarily mean that that's always the right thing to do, but. Chances are when your heart rate is going up and you're making a decision very, very quickly and it's you know that your emotions are in a heightened sense, a lot of times that's when I make my mistakes. And so, you know, again, working with that financial professional, that's a big part of our job is just slowing people down and saying, hey, let's think about this for a second. And again, going back to the beginning of this, we're just going to keep pounding this into the sand um, and taking home the point that, Ask yourself if it actually does anything for you and your financial plan. Right. Does it actually get closer to what you want? Yep. And don't take our word for it, because I have a quote from Warren Buffett himself. All he right. says, risk comes from not knowing what you're doing. It's true. There's other forms of risk out there, but this is a pretty obvious one. And, and the fact of the matter is, is, if we don't have a plan, then we don't have a process. And if we don't have a process then we can't know we're, what we're doing. We can't know if what we're doing is effective. Right. If it will move us toward anything. Um, you know, you, you, you got to have a bullseye on a dartboard to measure your accuracy. You got to have something to aim at. You do. Otherwise, you're just throwing darts at a wall. Right. Right. So um, it's it the financial plan and the process – that's the most work. Yeah. And it's hard work. And sometimes it's 
invasive or intrusive because you got you, you know in, if you can do this on your own first yep. and foremost but if you choose to have a professional help you we have to understand cash flows we have to understand goals and not just financial goals we need to understand personal goals and family attributes and dynamics and vision and values and beliefs and sometimes that's like i don't know if i want to share all of that and if you're not sharing all of that with your person then they're not doing you any good right they're they they might be suggesting that they're making progress yeah if you have a headache and i give you a motrin and your headache starts to go away i go like see that's it yeah but then all of a sudden you're you know realizing post mortem that you have a brain tumor and that's my fault yeah because i didn't do my job well yeah um i i have clients prospective clients people come into my office all the time that will talk to every talking point about their portfolio investments investment decisions but when i just step back and say hey let's pause there let's talk about your goals yeah they it's awkwardly weird like they they it's like they start just you know tripping over their own tongue and and they're at best extremely vague right um and you realize where the focus has been their entire life and why they're so um anxious about the progress yeah. you can look at the portfolio and you're like you guys have been doing great yeah well we don't feel like it well because you haven't defined what great is right right so that's that's the point of making sure we do things in the right order and the order of things is plan first design the process and then choose the tools that can make the process and plan successful or that give you the best shot at making them successful right um one of the most important critical phases, and we've talked about this a hundred thousand times, is is that first part of setting goals, and and being um, like looking within and, and defining our values and what makes makes us tick. Um, but then there's also like understanding how we feel about risk and what our time horizon is with the money that we have or the goals that we're trying to accomplish. Sure. Um, you know, there's certain goals that, I, and this isn't even like it's somewhat about age. And I think a lot of financial professionals default to like, oh, you're in your 40s, so your portfolio should look like this. Right. Well, that is the assumption that we're working towards retirement. Yeah. What if my goal is to pay cash for a house and I want to do that in 10 years? Yeah. Completely different. Right. Correct. So I can be 20 years old and have a really small time horizon yeah. for a specific goal. I can be 60 years old, and if my goal is passing on a legacy to my family, my timeline doesn't even matter. Or starting a business. Or starting a business. Then like, the timeline's really tight, right? So yeah. the, like I have one 60-year-old that has money. He's starting a business, so his timeline is like zero because he wants to start a business now. Um, and then I have another 60-year-old that says, hey, I'm never touching this money. It's for my grandkids. Yeah. Timeline is not his retirement date the timeline is not his life life you know um yeah expectancy is it's it's decades away right right um so what are some actionable steps to make sure that we're not putting the cart before the horse right first and foremost um if i ask you about your portfolio like if you come and sit down with me and i say what is this investment? And you start talking about the companies, the return, the beta, like all these things. <laughs> cool. I got a good story about that. Cool. But if you can't tell me how it helps you accomplish your goal, then you're obviously, that, that should be a, a very easy stress test to be like, okay, I own this stock or I own this bond or I own this fund or I own whatever. How does it help me achieve? Well, its long-term average is this, and this is my growth rate that I need to accomplish this goal in this many years. Right. Boom. That's what I want to hear. Now we know the plan exists. We know there's a process, and we know we're making investment decisions that support that. Yeah. I had a client come in. We actually worked together for a couple of years, and this shows that we're not all perfect. Um, 
because we were we were we did some fantastic things with their portfolio. Um, but once we got them into the financial planning process and they finally kind of said, okay, Brandon, let's do the financial planning piece. We realized they were so much closer to their goals than they thought. And I was able to redesign their portfolio, um, to take a lot of risk off the table. Right. And I, I told them, look, we're taking a lot of risk off. So long-term your returns probably won't be as sexy as they were. Right. But this year, last year, all the volatility that's been in the markets, they have been so grateful that we took time to do that because they they were able to reduce their risk, right? Reduce their volatility, and they know they're still on track through all of this. So yeah, um, super beneficial. What's your what's your story? Well, the one thing that I was thinking about, um, is, is a little piece for the audience to take home. To sum all that up from what you just said, we used to call that, well, in the business, some people use this, but they call it SMART goals. Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this before. But this may break it down for y'all uh, to make it a little easier. So, again, we keep talking about your why, what you actually want. So SMART goals, it's a uh, acronym. It stands for Specific, Measurable, uh, Achievable. Achievable. Thank you. <laughs> Re uh, yeah, realistic. realistic in time. Yep. So, okay, specifically, I want to send my kid to college. Okay, great. What college? Be specific. Okay, they want to go to the local uh, state university. Okay, great. Measurable. How much do I need to get there? Okay, well, it's 15000 a year for four years. You know, that's $60,000. Okay. Is that achievable? Well, I can invest... $250 a month. Let's plug that into a calculator somewhere and try and figure out if we can reach that goal. Okay. Real. And that will tell us whether or not it's realistic. Right. Mm -hmm. But then the time, okay. How much time do we have to do this? But that could be with anything, you know, that could be, I want to deadlift 400 pounds. Okay. Yeah. When do you want to do that? By next year. Okay. January 2nd of next year. Okay. Um, you know, measure, how are you going to measure to get there? How, how do you want to incrementally get better to get up to 400 pounds? So uh, I digress, but think of smart and that'll sometimes help you to get to your why as well. Well, and I think too, one thing in that process that's a lot of times if you go to a financial professional, going back to that 250 a month into a, a, a fund for your kid's college, um, a lot of times they'll say, you know, advisors can, can play the game pretty well sometimes. Right. If you're if you're not careful about who you're working with. And so, you know, if I type in, you can put in 250 bucks a month um, and I realize you need to be at 60,000 and let's say 15 years. Um, maybe when I type in that growth rate for that compounding interest kind of thing. Yeah. I might type in like nine and a half. Yeah. And this whole time we've been having this conversation about how terrified of like the financial markets you are. Right. And how you'd prefer just to have everything in cash. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you, Oh yeah, it's super achievable. Look at this, look at this, you know, crazy graph with everything that you don't understand. That's only going to cause more anxiety down the road, but sure. It's achievable. Yeah. Well, how about we rephrase that question? Hey, if you held nothing but cash and asked for no help from the markets, right? it's not achievable. Yeah. Right. If you open yourself up to 6% return on average, then it's still not achievable, but it balances. It's a, it's a, it's a marrying of your comfort with market exposure. Right. And it gets you pretty close. Yeah. So now inside of that space, if you can be comfortable with this amount of risk, then maybe we can also say, hey, once my child turns 14, we already have a list of scholarships that we're going to start writing essays for and applying for because we need we know we need to solve the problem for $10,000. Right. Right? Or But you know what you're working with. You know what you you've got to But it's, do. again, we've, we've, we've got the plan. We've developed the goals. Now we, we're assessing how. Right. And the how is not for just an advisor to manipulate the potential return because one, we know what typically the markets give over a long extended time. Sure. But even inside of that, I might have to account for the fact that I don't think most people, most people in my experience, 
are not comfortable with the amount of risk that they think they are. And most of the time, they're not comfortable with 100% exposure to equities. Yes. I've seen that in, the, in good times. They love it. But when oh, we yeah. go through that bear market, that volatility is violent and scary. And the news is only like telling you that you're right about every emotion you're feeling. Right. They're reinforcing everything. Yeah. And then they quit. And then they're derailed. So we have to make calculated decisions inside of this process to say, hey, I know my client. I've learned this about them or things that they've said makes me believe that they can't handle 100% equity exposure. Sure. So guess what? You're not going to get 7% return. Right. You may not get five. Yeah. So if we can only count on three and a half or four, then what can we do outside of that yeah. to still make your goals accomplishable? And usually there is a solution. Yeah. Unfortunately, if I'm just an advisor charging you a particular way and I can only do business in one way, sometimes it's not my best. Like, how much money am I going to make by telling you to coach your kids into writing essays for scholarships? Right. Maybe nothing if I'm charging you a commission or percent of AUM, right? Right. So what, what's the, what's the schemey? financial guy out there and because they do exist not everybody most actually most advisors i meet are like super super honest and really good human beings but there are scheming ones out there yeah what are they going to do they're going to plug in 11 percent, absolutely no and you'll never get it yeah right because guess what you'll put 250 dollars a month in yeah right mm -hmm. so start 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 with a plan then you go there's a process and then there is the the t in, like incorporating the tools. And I say, I mean, we say product because it's not just about stock or bond. It could be, you know, the insurance person pushing an insurance product on you. It could be an annuity. It could be, um, you know, uh, it, there's a million different tools out there. And sometimes they are really good tools. Yeah. And sometimes they're really good for other people. Sure. And then occasionally there is the good for you and good for you right now tool. Right. And that's what we want your portfolio to be built on. Yeah. Cool. Any thoughts? No, I think we covered it. I, I think, again, just to reiterate, start with where you want to be, when you want to get there, and then consult professionals and, and join, join the email list uh, yeah. the Sunday series. I, let's talk about that real quick. Yeah. So all these topics, all these ideas get sent out in very easy-to-digest uh, thought articles. Uh, they take about two minutes to read. We send that out. It's called the Sunday series. Um, highly recommend that you um, take a look and let us know if you want to be involved in that. You send us an email. You can email me at bmc at harpethwealthpartners.com. That's going to be in the show notes. Uh, you can also reach out to Bill at bill.mcgill, spelled M-A-G-I-L-L, -L, at Harpeth Wealth partners.com or you, you can go, just visit the website yeah, go to the website harpethwealthpartners.com it's all in there you can connect you can schedule calls or, or zooms or meetings with us um but get inside that so that way the idea here is you chew on the thought for a couple days by yourself figure out what you can figure out just by thinking then on tuesday you can listen to us talk about it um and then hear us kind of go back and forth from a professional perspective yeah um, and then that helps reinforce that and, and really dig deep into your brain trenches uh, to hopefully be something that you can practice whenever things get kind of tough. Um, and if you guys find us, you know, find the content super helpful, please consider showing a friend or a family member. Um, yeah, share that's it. How Love it. That's how we help more people. So. Yeah. The, all, these, all this stuff that we do, um, we, we rely heavily on our financial planning app elements. Um, so if you want it, we'll put a link in there. You can, you can download it, check it out. And then, uh, we can do like a follow-up call to kind of teach you in depth how to use it and how we work with people inside of that app. Um, that is it. And we look forward to talking to you next time. Have a good week, everybody. Bye. We hope you learned something valuable today. We appreciate you including us in your journey towards financial betterment. It is important to us that you know this is for educational purposes only and not to be considered specific advice for any individual listener. If something we discussed is relevant to you and you have questions about how it might be uniquely applicable to you, 
please discuss that with a financial professional or, of course, we are happy to have further conversations with you about your specific questions, needs, or circumstances. We welcome you to reach out to us via our website, harpethwealthpartners.com or by emailing brandon at bmc at harpethwealthpartners.com. Securities are offered through LPL Financial, member FINRA SIPC. Investment advice is offered through Private Advisor Group, a registered investment advisor. Private Advisor Group and Harpeth Wealth Partners are separate entities from LPL Financial. The opinions voiced in this material are for general information only and are not to be intended to provide specific advice or recommendations for any individual. To determine which strategies or investments may be suitable for you, consult appropriate qualified professionals prior to making a decision. Investing includes risk, including fluctuating prices and loss of principal. No strategy assures success or protects against loss. All performance referenced is historical and is no guarantee of future results. All indices are unmanaged and may not be invested into directly. Hypothetical examples presented are not representative of any specific investments. Your results may vary. We want to thank you for your time and we look forward to having you back next week.